Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to bring you guys a sponsored Shadowverse card reveal video. We got three cards from the upcoming Brigade of the Sky expansion. It's coming at the end of the month. There's a whole bunch of new mechanics and stuff, so I'll show you guys that. It is based on one of Asai Games' other games, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy, so there's a lot of lore from that. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, rich history, as it is a game from a few years back that has uh, gained a lot of popularity and uh, ties in very well with the current elements in Shadowverse. So let's go. Sophia Pious Pilgrim. This character is actually directly from the Grand Blue uh, Fantasy. Uh, it's a ha Havencraft follower. It's a pretty strong card here. While it is just, you know, a three cost, two, three, nothing special in that regard, the evolution is very strong. Uh, it randomly summons a copy of an allied follower that has been destroyed during this turn. But when it's your turn, you know when to sacrifice the big followers, and, you know, in doing so, you can then and play this card after sacrificing just your big follower. So yes, it's random, but it's controlled randomness. It's really in the spirit of what randomness is in Shadowverse. It is random, but it's randomness that you can reduce to basically not random at all. Um, the card is very good, particularly in Havencraft, uh, largely because um, you can get a lot of tempo from casting like, you know, uh, an amulet or something like that, getting a giant follower a few turns later, and then sacrificing that giant follower and getting massive tempo from playing Sophia. So potentially a very high power card, but it's going to require some deck building to get the most out of it. Next up, we have Captivating Conductor. It is a portal craft card. Um, it, it might seem intimidating in, in terms of the text, but again, as with Shadowverse Spirit, they want to be very, very, very specific on what everything does, and everything follows what it says it does. There's no ambiguity whatsoever, but the simple translation of that text is you pick two followers, so you pick two dudes in play, and they deal their attack damage to one another. So if there's like a 5-5 five five and a 4-4, four four, the 4-4 the four four is going to die, and the 5-5 five five is going to become a 5 one. That's the idea. It's pretty simple. Is it pretty good? I think it's pretty good, but it's a very very meta-dependent card. You're going to have to play against decks that have a lot of mid-range guys out there, because if you're playing control, likely they won't have multiple big guys, and if you're playing aggro, it'll probably be too small for it to be a, you know, five, five play. It's just too much, I think. So meta-dependent, potentially very powerful. And then they gave me the well, one of the Swordcraft legendary followers, Latham the Honorable Knight. Uh, Latham features one of the new mechanics coming up in the new expansion, the Accelerate mechanic. So Accelerate is a mechanic where you can choose to play the card for a discount as a spell. So it's kind of the opposite of Enhance, where you'd have additional effects at increase cost. It's a substantially decrease in cost, but you don't get the follower. You just get that effect. So um, in Shadowverse, a knight is a very uh, commonly known follower. It is a token. It's just a 1-1 one, one guy. That's all it is. So if you want, you can remove this from your hand and for two, get two 1-1 one, one knights. Is that good? Not particularly. It's generally not that good to get two 1-1s one, for two. It's not horrible but it's not great. But that's just one version of the card. The actual card is an 8 cost 8-7. Eight, uh, evolving him gives him you know, proportionate plus 2 plus 2 stats. And when you play him, the fanfare ability gives your leader permanent effect. So this is kind of like an uh, from this point until the game ends, it's kind of like an aura effect. And uh, whenever an allied follower attacks, if there's no knights in play, so we're talking about that one cost, one, one, you summon a knight. So you basically get to swarm it up big time. And whenever an allied follower that originally cost one play points comes into play, you give it to Storm. And these effects are not stackable. So I guess they don't work with each other. But nonetheless, multiple passive like aura like effects for the rest of the game are very strong. I believe the idea of this card is you play it in an aggressive swordcraft deck and if you need to, if you don't have anything else to play in the early game, you get two 1-1 one, one knights for two. Again, that's 
pretty decent, especially if you're playing aggro and swarming it up and just going face. Now, if you're still playing that same deck and you're running really low on cards and you happen to draw a Latham, it's a really big guy with a permanent effect that gives a lot more juice to your um, normally small followers. They have, you know, they have additional effects to summon knights. They have uh, additional effects to um, potentially, if they're small enough, get storm, get to attack right away. So it just fits that deck type very well. Will that tech type, deck type succeed in the upcoming expansion? Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to play it out. As always, Shadowverse expansions are very impactful. A lot of stuff changes. So let's see what it's going to be like this time around. Hope you guys enjoyed my review, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.